Welcome to episode 14 of The Closest They Came, a series where we take a look back on the days when drivers, winless at NASCAR's highest level, came painfully close to etching their names into the history books. Today we'll be looking back on Jeff Green's race in the 2002 New England 300 from New Hampshire International Speedway. Hailing from Owensboro, Kentucky, Jeff Green would enter the racing world in the late 1980s, joining his older brothers David and Mark. He would gain national respect after becoming the 1990 track champion at the Nashville Fairground Speedway, making his Bush Series debut the same year, driving for John Boatman. He would compete full-time in the Bush Series for the first time in 1995, driving for Dale Earnhardt Incorporated. His greatest success would come between 1999 and 2001, driving for PPC Racing, where he would win 13 races for the team and claim the championship for the 2000 season in dominating fashion. On the Cup Series side, he would make his debut in 1994 for the Sadler Brothers, before making a handful of starts in the early DEI entries. Green would enter a total of 58 races between 1994 and 2001, with the lion's share coming in the Diamond Ridge Motorsports ride. His first season of full-time competition would come in 2002, driving for Richard Childress. Entering the weekend at New Hampshire International Speedway in July of 2002, Green had earned two top five and four top ten finishes in 76 career Cup Series starts. He would qualify 30th, averaging 129.42 miles per hour on his first of two qualifying laps. He is back. He would begin moving forward immediately after the start, However, trouble would strike early for Dave Blaney, who would spin in turn three on the second lap. Green would line up in 20th for the restart on lap six. Jimmy Spencer's spin down the back stretch on lap 19 would put the race back under caution. The back half of the field, including Green, would pit here, making a fuel-only stop. But these guys at the back of the field are going to come now down pit road. Remember, fuel mileage is really important at this track. This track has a reputation for early cautions and then a lot of green flag racing. Mark Martin comes and goes. Everybody else, a lot of guys just getting fuel, some taking tires. He would line up 23rd for the lap 23 restart. Contact with Joe Nemechek would cause the third caution on lap 29 and incur slight damage to Green's right front. He would line up 22nd when the race would resume on lap 36. Elliott Sadler's spin on lap 59 would bring all 37 lead lap cars in for a pit stop. Sadler has resumed in 37th place, last car on the lead lap. It's going to be interesting to see. I, I can't see how Rusty and these other cars can stay out with a chance to pit. Well, here they all come. Green would take four tires here, while many others would go for two-tire or fuel-only strategies, moving him back to 31st for the lap 65 restart. A series of incidents would occur during this fuel run. John Andretti and Casey Atwood would crash on the front stretch on lap 75, Kyle Petty would crash in turn four on lap 105, and Tony Stewart would follow suit on lap 122. Several cars would pit during this caution. Green would stay out and line up in 10th for the lap 132 restart. I've done the same thing and said, guys, just give me a break here. The problem is these guys are going to be getting real close to each other, getting into the corner. After a 27-lap green flag run, Ricky Rudd's car would leave fluid on the track, bringing out the eighth yellow. Green would pit here, taking fuel only, and becoming the first car off of pit road, moving him up to sixth for the restart on lap 168. Jeff Green is going to come off pit road first. With no smoke. There we see our exit pit exit. Jeff Green goes by. Jerry Nadeau is your leader as we go back under the green flag. Jeff Gordon is second. John Andretti, Ward Burton, and Bobby Hamilton, the rest of the top five. I'm going to pit it on this yellow. And you have Jeff Green, who's a fuel only. Out on older tires, he would fall back to 10th by the time Steve Park spawned on lap 188. He would stay out once again as a few of the leaders would pit, moving him up to 7th for the lap 193 restart. He would fight hard to hold off those with fresh tires until an incident on lap 199 between Michael Waltrip and Terry Labonte slowed the race once more. Uh, Jeff Gordon. Oh. That's Jeff Gordon's radio. He's not happy. Jeff Green is running in eighth place, trying to defend that from Ricky Craven and Dale Jarrett. And Went a little sideways. Oh, we got Michael Waltrip. Two. In trouble right there. And Terry Labonte down at the bottom of the racetrack also stopped in that incident.
Greenwood Pitt here for tires and fuel, planning to make it to the end from here. This would move him back to 28th in the lineup for the lap 207 restart. So I guarantee you some guys at the back of the pack are going to try it. Well, All here right. comes the leader. Ward is going to come in. Jeff Green. Looks like Dale Jarrett, Elliot Sadler. A lot of these guys you think are setting themselves up for a fuel mileage run, Marty. He would move up to 23rd by the time caution number 11 came out for debris in turn three on lap 232. The majority of the lead lap cars in front of him would pit here, moving him up to fourth for the lap 240 restart. Did not pit. Dale Jarrett, Jimmy Johnson, Elliot Sadler, Jeff Green, Terry Labonte, Todd Bodine. They are the first six. Michael Waltrip would have his second incident of the day moments later on lap 243. Green would line up third when the action would resume on lap 248. We are green at New Hampshire once again. Now Dale Jarrett can't be so nice. He's got three of those guys lined up, so he got to the bottom. Good restart from him. All right, he got a really good break in Steve Park. Held up Elliot Sadler, Jeff Green. Watching Jeff Green and Ward Burton race for third and fourth places. A couple of guys trying to stretch the fuel, make it all the way to the finish from their last stops. And he needs to go. He needs to get by the 88 car because all these guys behind him are starting to catch him. Guys like Rusty and Ward Burton, Jeff Green. So he really needs to get by the 88. I think he's a little bit faster at this point. They may make it on fuel, but they're going to go for it anyway. It doesn't matter. We're not stopping. Man, the top six cars. Oh, Ward Burton just got into the back of Jeff Green there in the middle of three and four. Casey Atwood would have his own second incident of the day on lap 271. Green would line up in the fifth position for the lap 279 restart, getting around Sadler for fourth with 17 laps to go. He's there, he's trying to take that second spot, but we know DJ does not want to give it away, has no choice. And look at Jeff Green has moved into the fourth position by Elliott Sadler. He's this back here. Dale Jr. would bring out the 14th and final caution for an incident on the backstretch on lap 285. Green would fire off well following the lap 289 restart. 12 laps to go. Green flags back out. Oh, Elliot Sadler tried to make a move on Jeff Green, but Jeff just went right down, blocked him. And like I said, that's what we—that's what these guys are going to start doing right now. They're going to start driving in the mirror as much as out of the windshield. Quickly getting around Kenseth for third, and then setting his sights on Dale Jarrett. Something going on with Kenseth. I know, Bill, you said that his car needed some time to come up to speed. Is that all this is? He hasn't said a word, haven't heard any radio traffic. Uh, he's got his hands full. I don't think he can get to the button on the steering wheel. Heartbreaking. And this is what War Burt wants to see right here. These two guys racing. Because if these guys start racing each other, Ward is just going to keep driving away. And they're racing for second spot. Dale Jarrett and Jeff Green. Oh, he's got a big lead right now. Ooh, a little Jeff nudge. Green. There's going to be some bad people when this is over. <laughs> like Bristol. Yeah. I'd like to open my office up as a sports guy, a psychologist, I'm telling you. Make more money than these guys with racing. Jeff Green to second. Great run for the AOL car. Boy, you charge a lot. I do charge a lot, yeah. Jeff Green's another one that took the fuel on at lap 200 and is going to stretch it to the finish. He would ultimately cross the line in second, 3.23 seconds behind Ward Burton, who would claim his second win of the season and the fifth and final of his career. His race car looked like it came out of Martinsville instead of New Hampshire, but you were inching ever closer to that first win and another big turnaround for an RCR team, Jeff. Well, thanks, Matt. It's a good day for OL Chevy. Uh, we've, uh, I think everybody knows we've had some struggling times this year. And, and we just had a plan today. Uh, if we got, you know, to where we run all the way on in on fuel, we wasn't coming in anymore. Track positions, everything, and Todd had a pretty good race car for me today. So uh, all that said, uh, I think we had something for Ward. Ward just got too far away from me on that last restart. And these last three, these restarts are hairy on those old tires. And uh, just, uh, it's a good day here in New Hampshire. Like I say, hi, Michelle. She stayed home this weekend, and we miss her. Career best finish second for Jeff Green. Green would make a return to DEI in May of 2003 and run full-time in the Cup Series through 2007, earning two more top five and 11 more top 10 finishes. He would continue to make starts in the Nationwide and later Xfinity Series through his retirement from driving in 2020. A 16-time winner and champion of the Bush Series, Jeff Green was an immense talent behind the wheel when all the right pieces were in place. 
On an eventful New England summer afternoon in July of 2002, the stars nearly aligned for him to claim a victory on the sport's biggest stage. 